I published my first first author paper. So I was thinking of what to share here today. So I went back to my videos, some of my past videos in grad school, and I saw a video where I said that I wanted this channel to be a bit of my diary through grad school. And then I thought to myself, why did I never share the story of how my first, first author paper was rejected three times and then published eventually the fourth time? Why did I not share the story of all the highs and lows? How I thought it was never going to get published and how eventually I have published now not just one but two first author papers in this year. If this is a topic you're interested in, keep watching because I'm going to share not just my wins, not just what my research is about, but also what advice I have for you if you have yet to publish your first first author paper. Okay? So keep watching. Hi friends, my name is Evie. I am a fifth year molecular biology PhD candidate. I am still a student after five years. And on this channel, I share different things. I'm talking about science, I'm talking about my life as a graduate student, and I'm even talking faith sometimes. So it's a mix of everything. What's wrong with me? It's a mix of everything. But yeah, this video is a chill video. I feel like I've been trying to educate you guys for the past two videos. So now we just want to chill. If you don't want the education, it's all right. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's going on in my life, PhD program and my paper. So let's talk about the paper. Um, I came in to grad school and I was given a project. A little detail about my research. My model organism is mice. That means that I do dissect mice, and not only that, I dissect mice that are as small as this. Look at these two mice. They are actually the same age. They were born from the same mom. So what is the difference between these two? Well, this one has a mutation in the protein I study, which is PTHRP, I'm not going to say the full name because it's just too long and I don't think you care. Look it up if you do. So yeah, that's the protein I study and because we have made a genetic mutation that changes this, the protein in this particular mice, they don't grow well, they die at four days old and they also have a lot of metabolic issues now the cool part is that this protein is also found in human beings so we're using this mouse model to understand the role of this protein in human beings and that is what i published my first first author paper on basically my research was trying to understand how these mice function metabolically so we were trying to characterize this mice metabolically and figure out how to advance our knowledge of this protein even in humans. So what I basically did was carry out some studies to know what their blood glucose level was, what their insulin levels were, what their glucagon levels were. Let's start with the blood glucose. Everybody knows blood glucose. Glucose is basically what carbohydrates are converted to in your body. So basically, I checked the blood glucose of these mice, just like you would check your blood glucose if you go to the hospital or if you have the device at home, but now I am deviating, so let's come back. Now, I checked the blood glucose and their blood glucose was very low compared to their control brothers and sisters number one sign that something was wrong metabolically because they were eating enough to check their stomach for milk next thing we measured their insulin now what is insulin insulin is basically a hormone that helps to reduce blood glucose basically sends a message to clear out blood glucose from the blood 
we do not want so much insulin but we also do not want so little insulin that blood glucose is not being cleared when i checked their insulin level they had so much insulin compared to the control now that may explain why their blood glucose was low yeah interestingly we also found that another hormone glucagon which is important for increasing blood glucose levels was low so basically we we're finding that indirectly or directly this protein has an effect on both insulin and glucagon and this was the first time we, anybody was showing that the protein had an effect on glucagon which was interesting and why i am a bit proud of my paper now um given that this protein is found in human beings is a really big deal because we've seen that this protein increases with people that have type 2 diabetes which is basically when there's so much insulin floating in the blood cells and the body is not as sensitive to insulin so my research basically threw in another player that could have a role in diabetes and of course there's so much more research that needs to be done but for this to happen i had to kill a lot of mice i had to isolate some of their tissue from these little mice i had to do a lot of work i measured different metabolic assays for us to get here okay and also it was not very easy because these mice they die at four days so if you slack they die on you and if you are somebody who is not comfortable with killing animals i am apologizing actually i'm not this research will be important for human beings like you and i so just celebrate it in the comments why was it difficult for me to publish this manuscript there were many reasons first sometimes your manuscript just does not fit the place you're trying to send it to so you want to try to look at what they've published before secondly sometimes they just want more data and in my own case it was difficult to keep churning out more data because i was dealing with these very small mice that die at four days and that also have very small tissue to work with so if you want me to prove something 20 times it's a little difficult okay some of them just had issues with the model generally and i won't bore you with that but basically it was hard my advisors at some point i think one of them probably almost gave up um, but we kept resubmitting i think the first draft of the manuscript was done in 2021 and it ended up getting published in 2023 so it took a lot of time for everything to come together now for you who is trying to publish a manuscript what is Edie's advice number one start with the aim of publishing a manuscript most of us like explorative science oh well, let's see how this looks if we do this what will happen or what if i add this to this what is gonna happen it's all beautiful and but if your goal is to publish a paper then sit down with your laptop and figure out what you need each figure to be like what experiment will fit figure one what experiment will fit figure two all of that that way your experiments are guided and they are not purposeless you're not just trying to be doing different things to see how they will go and wasting your time again just try to have a goal and also another thing i would say is have an idea of the kind of journal you want to publish your manuscript in if you want to publish your manuscript in nature or still then you know that it may take you four to five years to gather all the figures you need for a nature or cell publication and that's okay if that's what you want just make sure you are aware of what it takes to do what you want make sure you are able to give it your all read papers from that journal so that you can meet the criteria rejection is not easy you don't want to go through it if you don't have to go through it okay so make sure you're reading articles in that particular journal number three know when to stop you know the thing with science is beautiful and there will always be something else you can do 
experiment no they finish i don't know why i'm sounding like this today see experiment no they finish you see the paper i published and even my second first author there is always something new to do but at some point between you and your advisor maybe even just you you have to say this is enough and let's turn it to the reviewers and see what they say that way you don't spend so much time in the lab doing all this work that you could have gotten away with okay especially i'm talking about people who their goal is a paper we need papers for different things right so if that's your goal then don't waste time doing things that you don't have to do now the other point is writing i feel like that deserves a whole video by itself start with the easiest you see your materials and methods you can be writing it as you're going you really don't have to wait till you have your groundbreaking data everything you do as you use a protocol write 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 your materials and methods then write your introduction because that one is just basic knowledge basic introduction in your field which you probably already know you just need to put in the right references so that's also supposed to be easy have an idea of what you want each paragraph to be like if you want paragraph a to be globally what the disease ratio or the problem is globally what the weight of the problem is let that be paragraph one paragraph two what have other people done paragraph three what is your method uh, paragraph four like you know just make sure that you know what each paragraph wants to be that helps with writing results are also easy when you actually have the results if it's when you have the results to be able to write so when you have the results then you can easily just put that down grouping them based on figures this is something you can do with your advice so i highly recommend that you have your figures done in powerpoint before you even go to write your results that way it is just easier discussion is the most difficult thing to write and it is the one that will test you what is my advice for each result figure that you have figure out what you want to oh look at what i did there for each result figure that you have figure out what you want to discuss so if you have a figure i don't know i don't want to go into specific just figure out what other people have found that is related to what you found how yours is different sorry the light is changing we're using daylight here how yours is different how yours adds to the body of knowledge what this means for the future do it figure by figure that way you have a lot you've discussed on and then you can now choose what is most relevant for you okay um usually these days for research articles they are saying 50 to 60 references or at least above 50 to 60 references so that's not too bad between your introduction and discussion you can pull that off okay and also give yourself a deadline i think that's my final tip. give yourself a deadline oh no this is the almost final tip. give yourself a deadline tell yourself that this week you want to make sure you're done with the introduction um, and have people you are accountable to, maybe your advisor, maybe tell him that, oh, by our next meeting, I will give you the introduction. This lighting has changed. Oh my God. By our next meeting, I'll give you the introduction. When you're able to do that, it sets you on your feet. Last thing, do not try to make your writing perfect. I don't know why we do this. If the sentence is not Harvard standard, we're not going to leave that paragraph. There's no point. You're just going to be wasting your time. So keep going, keep writing. There's something called editing. There's something called proofreading. You're never going to have your best draft at the first time. And it's okay. So keep writing, keep going. But yeah, I just thought to share with you guys. This is a good thing that happened to me. Um, I'm nearing the end of my PhD, pray for me. I hope to have one more paper, which will now make you three first or third papers, which I'm very content and happy with. Um, but it's been a journey and I'm grateful to God for his help through this. Okay, so thank you guys so much for watching. I'm grateful for all of you subscribing, sharing, commenting. Thank you. 
so much and i will see you in my next one bye